table is ready, dear. You know, I've always loved this restaurant. <laughs> Happy birthday, niece. Is that... Is that... It is. <laughs> I thought it only worked with stew. Well, I rigged it to work with pancakes. Oh, what else could it do? Strawberry juice? Custard toast? Bacon berry pie? Why stop with breakfast? What about spring and roast? Hazelnut chowder? Devil eggs? Huh? Black corn flavored jelly beans! I have never been more in love with you than I am in this very moment. Aha. Uh -huh. Gwendolyn must be ready with her surprise. Come in, sweetheart. Happy birthday, Grandma and niece. Well, thank you. I wonder what it could be. Open it. Open it. Oh, my. You made this? Sure did. I haven't had one of these in years. And such lovely colors. How did you know? A little to see Mr. Told me. Book from when she knew yeah, the unicorn together. book. Yeah, there's, there's like a, it's all I hints. Love it. The loot is not the real present. May I? Oh, sure. Cute. Play a crazy jam now. Oh. Oh dear. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Grandma. Just listen. This is my favorite birthday ever. This is so nice, bro. It's so charming. I know, now I want pancakes. <laughs> What to do, what to do? That was, a, this was a really nice chapter, and like we promised on the last episode, we almost like skipped it. <laughs> but let's talk about what just happened, man. Because everything the first time that we played through this, mm -hmm. you were the one that pointed it out to me, and my mind was like blown. Yeah. First things first, let's talk about uh, man and two tropes. Uh, at the end of this episode, when you say, how do I look? And he looks, you could tell just by the way his arm is that he's like bigger. And the fact that he called the other guy, his, his brother, Mordok, is the direct tie into the old King's Quest series. Where Mananin was one of the villains. That's right. And then afterwards, uh, you have his brother come after you. Mm -hmm. And then there was obviously V in this episode. If you pick obviously niece, it's the other way around. But V is hand is turning to ice. The ice queen. Yet another villain from a, another one of the games. That's right. Like my mind was blown when you pointed that out the first time we played through this chapter. And I couldn't believe it. Like it was staring me right in the face the whole time. And I'm flipping out how they... They throw every Easter egg they can from every, like, the thing with the little owl with the glasses and the little suit. Yes, yeah, Cedric, no? it's so good. <clears throat> and it shows you that the odd gentleman, when they were doing this game, really did think about everything and showed their love and respect for the old games. Now, I think this is probably the best remake in several years. I mean, oh, yeah. the closest Definitely. thing that I could sort of say 
I've experienced as far as like nostalgia value, like love for what it was, would be, um, and I know this is an adult game, but the Leisure Suit Larry remake. Yeah, that's Sierra again. You, see? you know what I mean? Where they where they took that Leisure Suit Larry, the original Leisure Suit Larry game, the original, and redid it with the graphics from like Leisure Suit Larry Seven, uh, Lost at Sea, and like they took the time and the care and. That's exactly what they're showing with this. And the reason why I'm so excited about it more than anything else is the fact that, thinking back, the amount of hours, hours, that I've spent with old school adventure games on my PC are countless. Oh, man. There, there's the King's Quest series. Uh, you obviously said Police Quest, uh, Space Quest. Uh, you were into the Sierra games a lot more than I was. I played a mm. couple of the Leisure Suit Larrys. The games that I used to play would be a lot of the LucasArts ones, like uh, Secret Bat of Monkey Bangle Island. And, and, Monkey Island. Yeah. and it's something that I feel is lost in a lot of modern gaming. Like, there's not many games like this anymore. Like, I, like we said earlier when we were talking about it a bit, the... Uh, the Telltale games are pretty much the closest that we've come, you know? That's right. In terms of that kind of storytelling. But even that, you got to think to yourself, how often is it that in a game like uh, uh, Walking Dead, uh, Tales from the Borderlands, Game of Thrones, all uh, even Batman, the newest iteration, mm -hmm. how many modern games do you think would let you sit there and struggle with a puzzle forever? You know no, what I mean? Nothing like this. There, there's a lot of there's a little bit of uh, of uh, put this above towards fortune in a lot of gaming. Yeah. If you're not in the level, you're not uh, uh, getting through it. If, if you're not going through a quick time, it, it seems like they don't want to take their time as much. That's right. With a story, we explore. And again, I, have, I think it has to be as far as Concern, the limitations of the hardware at the time you didn't have non-stop action but you couldn't handle it literally. so you had to focus on the story and the, and the brain so I, I really enjoyed this so far now, now like I said I enjoyed chapters 1, 2, and 3 they've all been great chapter 4 is literally all the solving and I hated it <laughs> <laughs> uh. you know Storyline, it's great. Okay. Uh, but, and from a storytelling perspective, that's why I kept powering through it. It's what made me want to go. But it reminded me of why I hate a lot of games at this time. And why I couldn't like, solve a lot of the text based Like, uh, quest and all that, where you'd have to use bad book intro flip over thing, you know? Push button. <laughs> yeah. He's play space quest. I have to go pick up some sort of machine. Yeah, you know, like, I, I, that was a little too much. I started really started getting into it a lot more when it came point and click adventures. Yeah. <laughs> which, which still is, you know, fun and everything, but it, it helps a lot of the problems. When you know, okay, something can interact here because the mouse changed. <laughs> and you talk about Sierra games, everybody died. The way they fun of you is hilarious. Like, oh, listen to me because my advice is no good. And you slipped and fell. And... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, too bad. You have to try it again or something like that. Yeah, they, they always need a point to this to make failure still a fun option. You know what I mean? Uh, like you were mentioning before, whether it's the game itself sort of mockingly making fun of you or the King's Quest version. Puns in this one. When he's a storyteller. Yeah. He's the one telling you the puns. They, they always make that fail state just amusing. You, you saw what we did in the record chapter one, where you're walking away in the opposite way where he's narrating, and he's like, oh, when I turn this, I to turn back again and go for my quest. Yeah, go west. Then it forced the law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not the right. Right way, this is the right way, and then he blocks you with the chickens. <laughs> oh, it's great. So, we're going to get into this, of course, another time. We're going to continue chapter 4. We're obviously 
you got break between chapters. It's a long series to get the game, so game done, but I had a super fun time with that. about you? Me, I love I love the story. following it, you know, being entangled in it. It's it's great, and for those of you who've never played the game and want to start it, this is the best way to start. I would say start with this game. If you're curious, go ahead and play the game. You can play them for free. There's a couple of websites out there. You just have to play uh, um, Dust games online, like classic. You actually play on the browser. So, um, I guess we'll call that a wrap. Yeah, and we'll see you all next time, guys and gals. Let's select start. Thank you.